five o'clock this morning thinking, what is wrong with you? I mean, you know, you run every day. You're 51 years old, but you run every day. Then I realized, well, it really is 2 a.m. and my body's saying, why didn't you sleep? So, uh, so if I'm not looking perky enough, you know. Then, then the other thing is, is if I'm only going to be here for less than 24 hours, I just stuck one outfit in a bag and I was good to go. And then when I got dressed, uh, I think I said to Bill Sullivan, or at least I thought it, I said, I'm coming to an area that doesn't know anything about word alone, and maybe what they know isn't helpful, and I come dressed like this. So <laughs> I'm not trying to make a, a, any kind of statement with my, uh, my wild kind of cheetah uh, look here. I'm not the Wicked Witch of the West or anything. Um, actually, I was a missionary in Africa for years. So that, uh, you know, there's my end. Um, my first call uh, from 85 to 91 was in Tanzania, East Africa. And I think the good Lord, you know, I mean, he's uh, worked this with me all the way. And that was the way that he sent me to East Africa so that everything they taught me in seminary uh, that I wasn't supposed to believe about the Bible, then I lived it, and it was true uh, over in Africa. So I said, wow, that was four years to tell me what I believed before I went was actually true. Uh, so that's kind of how I deal with people that get uh, real um, hepped up on their intellectual approaches to the Bible and convince all you lay people that, um, you know, this is so difficult. Uh, don't try this at home so you don't. Uh, and the Bible collects the dust because this is so difficult that you can never know what Jesus is trying to say to you. So you don't read it. Um, and then uh, the devil laughs, right, uh, all the way home. So uh, what I've included here is a uh, – I'm having a problem with getting this to the size I want it in there. I'm down on my knees again. Um, I want to start with uh, – and I've been doing this in a lot of places – a traditional prayer. Uh, from Kenya. So let us pray. From the cowardice that dares not face new truth, from the laziness that is content with half truth, from the arrogance that thinks it knows all truth, good Lord, deliver us. Amen. I don't know how many of you uh, have heard about the woman that was uh, getting ready uh, to go on and board a plane, and she was on a dead run uh, through the airport. Boy, I've never done that. Um, and uh, she knew that she was going to get really hungry on the plane, and they weren't going to feed her anything, not even uh, peanuts anymore. So she grabbed this, uh, this bag of cookies. When she got there, her flight was delayed. I don't know if you've heard this before. Her flight was delayed, so she sat down. This is a true story. She sat down, and she put her bag of cookies down, uh, and she was waiting for a plane, quite frustrated, you know, doing the check. What did I lose? I, I must have lost something along the way. Uh, and then she just decided she was going to eat her sugar and just calm down. So she went to grab one of her cookies. And she noticed the guy next to her uh, took one of the cookies, too, out of the bag. And I was like... <laughs> so she took her cookie, and she got kind of mad. You know, it's like, they're expensive. It came from Starbucks. Um, so, you know, but she ate her cookie and tried to calm down, and then she went to get her next cookie, and uh, he had his hand in the bag, and he was taking another cookie. And she was getting really upset, uh, and uh, she um, wanted to say something, but, you know, don't say anything. It could cause a fight. So she didn't say anything. And when she reached over, you know, there was only one cookie left, and he broke the cookie in half and took his half um, and left her the other half. And by the time she got on the plane, she just was just in a rage. It's like, what is this world coming to? I mean, who are these people that have the gall to do something like that, right? She sat down in her seat. She opened up her bag, and there was her bag of cookies. <laughs> What happens is we assume that we're on top of it and we know exactly what's going on and then we can work ourselves into such a tizzy because we are certain that there's something being done against us uh, and then you have that moment of uh, what I say just pure knockdown drag out confession right you are forced to confess right oh, there's my cookies so my theory is there's enough sin to go around in this whole mess that we call church. 
And actually, I think there's more sin going on around in the churches than, uh, than maybe outside. At least equal amount. But for some reason, we think there isn't. I don't know where we ever got that. Where did we get that? That's some kind of other kind of religion. We believe the church is supposed to be perfect when the church is full of sinners, and that's why they're supposed to be there, because they know they're sinners. But uh, we've created this uh, church and this religion. So I don't know about you, but um, you know you know it's, you're not supposed to lie, right? You're not supposed to lie. You're not supposed to tell untruths about people. Um, and uh, Allison Grayson um, uh, was a really good Baptist woman, and she wanted everyone in the church to think that she was a wonderful person, right? You don't want anybody in the church to think about her. So she uh, was in the ladies' group in Tuscaloosa, and she remembered at the last minute she was supposed to bake a cake uh, for the women's uh, church bake sale, their big fundraiser. And uh, what was she going to do? She had to take a shower and everything. So she whipped together an angel food cake really quickly. Women. Do you make angel food quick cakes very quickly? Uh, so she whipped it up really quickly, stuck it in, took her shower, uh, took it out, and you can imagine what the angel food uh, cake that was made quickly looked like, right? Um, it uh, was a disaster, and uh, she wanted to scream out because there was a down in the middle. So she was very creative, and it's very important that the church women don't think that she's a slacker. So she went and she found her answer in the bathroom. She took a toilet paper roll and she stuck it in the middle of the cake, right? And then she got this fluffy white frosting and she covered it all up and then it looked beautiful and presentable. She really decorated it. And she went and she woke up her daughter. And she said, uh, here's the money. Uh, go down to the church. Be there when they open the doors to the bake sale. Buy the cake and bring it home. <laughs> She, she actually had obedient children, so she went down to the, the room, and, and she called her mom in a panic, and she said, it's not fair, mom. The cake's not fair. And she goes, oh. You know, I mean, that would be horrifying, right? Where's the cake? They said it's already sold. So she's worrying about this. Oh, she's so humiliated. Somebody's going to know that, you know, she, she was covering up. Well, she decided, you know, she was probably going to have to come clean. Then she went to uh, the upstanding, the most upstanding member of the church, was having a luncheon the next day. She went to her house, uh, and she responded. She had responded to the RSVP, so she needed to go, and she hoped that nobody knew that uh, that was her cake. And she walked in, and much to her, uh, you know, uh, she was just devastated because there, in the middle of the table to be served, was this uh, cake. There it was. And uh, to top it off, this woman was not only the top, you know, welcome woman, but she also was the mayor's wife. <laughs> so she uh, knew that, you know, it was all going to hit the fan, right? Everybody was going to know her shame and her lies. Um, so she just sat back and waited for it to happen. And then uh, she listened as they started complimenting the hostess on how beautiful the cake was. And Alice was stunned and sat back in her chair when she heard the hostess say, Thank you. I baked it myself. <laughs> so, so there it is. There's, there's just enough sin to go around people. There's enough. And what I've decided in the last 10 years, I've decided that the Bible is certainly enough just because every answer that you need is in there. Jesus said it himself, but it's in there. And if you don't believe me, the, the, what sin is, right, is right there up front. You know, you don't need 10 commandments. You got the first one. You're going to try to be God, right? And it started right away. So our sin is self-interest, right? We're going to put ourselves first. Right? What's interesting, what's occurred to me now, is I'm actually toying with the idea of finishing something I've started, which is the Ode to the Fig Leaf. <clears throat> because I always thought about the fig leaves being used to, to cover their private parts in the front. But in 